So it looks like 343 had to significantly scale down Halo Infinite's campaign, but don't take my word for it. Hear it from Joseph Staten himself. We did, and you know, I think that I know the team went through a lot of iterations on scope and biome variety before uh, I joined the team, and even after I joined the team, we had to make choices about where to where to scale back. In this recent interview with Ted Price from Insomnia Games, kind of developer to developer kind of podcast video, Joseph Staten himself goes into talking about the development of Halo Infinite and the experience moving forward and or some of the hardest realizations about releasing Halo Infinite. Some of the issues of supporting Halo Infinite as a live service game and also it looked like crafting was actually like genuinely considered for this game. So in this video, I'm going to break down all the major talking points from this hour and a half long podcast, guys, so you don't have to sit through the whole Thing and get all the details here. Now, since you're watching this channel, I know you're hungry for news and information, but one thing you actually could fulfill your hunger is with trytreats.com. And the country that we're exploring today is Indonesia. Indonesia. Now, if you're missing some of the snacks you used to have in your old country, or you're looking to expand your snacky borders, trytreats.com has got you covered. You can try treats from various continents like Asia, Latin America, Australia, Europe, Africa, and North America. And if you use my code KevinCoolX at checkout, it gets you 15% off your first purchase. So thank you Try Treats for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into those details. Now I'm sure our instant thought is when they talk about scaling down the campaign is the fact of, well, the campaign has a lot of empty space, especially on the eastern side of the map. Let's take a quick look, look here of this interactive map here. You can see this is where all of the map and the world of Halo Infinite takes place. Oddly enough, on this right side, there's really basically nothing here for you to do, which is quite interesting. This all kind of takes place within like a linear mission for the most part, where most of this is where you're exploring. So people are thinking, yeah, they had to cut that out, but I had to leave it in the game or something. It's more than that. So staying here talks about scaling back various systems and making sure that what's in the game is really what's necessary for Halo. They actually legitimately thought about adding a crafting system. Now we talked about this previously years ago, back one of those blog updates, but it sounds like this is actually legitimately taken in consideration. And Joseph Staten had this to say about it. Infamous line for, to the team was something along the lines of like, Master Chief doesn't need to kill animals to make like leather shirts for himself. He's a he's a massive armored super soldier that if he wants something, he goes and like kills it and grabs its gun and then like keep, keeps on going. He's not, he doesn't need to like gather around a campfire and, and like, cook food in order to like replenish his health. He has a recharging energy shield that, that takes care of that for him. This also kind of goes on to a larger topic that they bring up within this podcast as well, saying that they considered a lot of aspects and different mechanics from other games to bring in the Halo. Some of them work, some of them really don't. Say they use Sprint in this actually podcast as an example, saying it actually kind of works with Halo, but saying like a crafting system, get around a campfire that regain your health. It just doesn't really work like that well in Halo. And it sounds like they actually legitimately consider it when the game which is quite interesting to think of like why would chief need to under that scavenge the world kind of stuff to like gain, gain health and food and stuff like that like it sounds like you're getting a little too much on the rpg scavenger side of things and not playing tr a true halo game experience which sounds like just saying might have helped put things back on the rails when it comes to that while oddly enough it sounds like they didn't really have to cut back a whole lot from the campaign and joseph stain had this to say about that but we still had to scale back, you know, make targeted cuts. Um, we didn't end up cutting that much ultimately from the open open world, but I know that from the original designs, there was a there was a pretty significant scaling back of of what the team uh, had hoped at one point that they could they could deliver on. Though there is even some content that we've seen from the campaign that didn't actually make it into the full game. One thing that comes to mind in particular is this moment within the campaign trailer right here that we had back in 2020. Uh, this moment right here showcases Chief looking at like three red dots and underneath like probably some underground forerunner structure or something like that. And well, this scene never made it into the game. Now it's important to note that since this was cut from the game and there were, were cuts made to the open world and the campaign in general, doesn't mean that that wasn't supposed to happen. And this happens all the time within game development. We've seen the recent information about Halo 3 had that huge completely cut level of Forerunner Forest where the map Guardian takes place on, where modders like Rejected Shotgun basically tried to recreate the boss battle that would have happened against one of the gigantic Guardian 
guardians in that forest. This is saying also talks about the team's reaction, like internally to the 2020 reveal, where you sound like a lot of people were super excited, get a chance to have people see the game and then like get that final lift to kind of go into the final motions of the development. Again, the release to hit that 2020 uh, year mark, but after community feedback, it hit them pretty hard. You know, they were talking about the biome variety, the mission variety and stuff like that just wasn't really quite there. They definitely wanted to hit some more different types of variety with that stuff, but it just didn't really happen to go that way. One of the things Joseph Sane actually did was that he helped push for more user research because they got plenty of feedback from the internet about what they expect out of a Halo game and what they didn't like about that reveal. And Joseph Sane was like, yeah, we can still get this feedback, but probably do it in a much more private manner so it's not just so public out to the world. So we can basically get blasted every time something's not absolutely perfect or something that we need to show yet. Ted Price actually also asked a really great question about any issues that there've been with supporting Halo Infinite. And well, we all know that Halo Infinite's live service hasn't really been exactly the most live experience that we've ever had when it comes to a live service game. Uh, a lot of things they talked about here specifically was just that Halo is a very large game when you think about it, right? This is one of the biggest pulls to Halo is that there are so many ways to enjoy this game and this franchise that it comes with a lot of expectations. Some of those expectations being like a fully fledged action packed campaign. That campaign also having co-op on top of it as well. With Forge for user generated content, having those avenues for, for players to post their creations within game to be able to be downloaded and stuff like that. Also a full fledged multiplayer with maps, customization and different types of stuff right there. Theater mode, custom games, training mode, just like a ton of stuff goes into a Halo game. And that's why Justin kind of talks about saying that it's kind of the main reason why things are a little bit slower when it comes to development. He even says that if they were just a multiplayer game, content flow would be a much more for us as players. But there are so many things that go into being a great Halo game that they decided to try to change the development style in a way. Instead of going from a sprint to try to get everything out as soon as possible, where a lot of game development has been there, had to do that, to much more of a marathon mode, as he describes it, is that if we're going long term, we're not going to try to push our development team to the point where they're going to be breaking, as we've heard previously, in a much more sustainable way, which does make sense. They basically, I think they just kind of saw the mountain of work that's still needed for Halo Infinite and they go you know what there's no need to break your back over trying to get this exact feature out in eight months instead of 12 months or something like that Staten also says that the team at 343 is a large team but not like huge compared to other development teams say like fortnite or call of duty where they have roughly about 500 employees that work for 343 which sounds like a lot which is true it's a good amount of people for sure but again, like you gotta think about the scope and size of a, what makes a great Halo game, and that certainly gets stretched out pretty thin. Now there are support studios as well, well along with the development of Halo Infinite, but you can kind of see what we're talking about here. Like there are so many studios that just make Warzone in Call of Duty. You have Infinity Ward, Treyarch, Raven Software, Sledgehammer Games, Beesnox, High Moon Studios, Toys for Bobs, uh, Activision Shanghai, as well as Demonware, like a ton of teams, full-fledged development teams, going to helping just support Call of Duty alone, especially mostly into the Warzone side of things. Now, I'm not saying that Halo doesn't have their support too, like we mentioned previously, they definitely have their support, but they're just not as large of a production team as these other studios. And that's where this bottleneck that they actually specifically mentioned happens. But this podcast does leave us off with a bit of hopium from Joseph Staten about what to look forward to about Halo, what keeps him excited about the franchise, and this is what he had to say. I would say the thing that makes me most excited about Halo going into the future is that the universe keeps expanding. The universe of Halo is still expanding. The horizon is broadening. He mentions specifically bringing in new characters. He talks about, say, for example, the Batman series, right? There was a franchise that we've seen. How many you know, retellings of the intro story to Batman have we seen? I can't even count that many. So it always seems like you're in a bit of a rut where Halo seems like it's gonna be still pushing forward and also bringing in new aspects into the franchise as well. This kind of, I think, makes gives me a little bit of hopium. I think he's kind of referring to more about the campaign side of things because that's kind of more his wheelhouse that I think we might be hearing more about the Endless and what's gonna be happening with those 
guys in that faction when it comes to the, everything involved with it to so where we can see something new happening with Halo. So it's not gonna be, it's just like the same old retreads of what we had previously, which I know a lot of people want. I see in the comments, I see you guys in the comments always want to have the old feels and the old memories and the old enemy types and game modes come back. But it sounds like they're still pushing forward for a new experience with Halo, which is exactly what I would want to see happen with Halo Infinite. And guys, we have some big news coming for Halo this week. If you want to know more about it, check out this video Video right here. The other video here is a short one talking about the 11 leaked maps that could potentially become in the Halo Infinite, one of the locations being a spot where they mine Needler ammunition. Pretty interesting stuff. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.